In the second part, we will now introduce the various elements of the IC61850 data model. What are these elements? Some of the terms like logical devices, logical nodes, data objects or data attributes you certainly have already heard about. But other terms are as well common data class and constructed attribute class. But what do they represent? First of all, they are elements in a hierarchical data model that we find within a 61850 server of an IED. The top level is the logical device. A logical device is a collection of multiple logical nodes. The logical nodes contain data objects. And finally, the structure of a data object is defined by the common data class. In the example, INS is a common data class for integer status information. The common data class defines what data attributes are available for a data object. The data attributes are the leaves of the hierarchy. It is at the data attributes where we find the values. However, data attributes can as well have a structure as a data type. In that case, we have what we call a constructed attribute class shown here with the example quality. Now that we have introduced these elements of the data model, I will explain for what they are used. Let's start with a closer look to the logical node. Logical nodes are the key elements for modeling application functions. A logical node represents a functional element like a distance element of a protection function or the interface to a switchgear equipment like a disconnecting switch. The logical node groups all the data that belongs to that function element. In our slide, we see an extract of the logical node XSWI that represents the interface to an electrical switch other than a circuit breaker. We have a first group of data objects defined here with the light blue background, which is as an example, the data object POS, which represents the position of the switch or a data object block opening, which represents that the block opening currently is blocked. What we see as well is the indication M mandatory or O for optional, whether the particular data object needs to be present or not. The second group of data objects that we see in this example, which is the light gray background, are, lot, are data objects that are more used to control the behavior of a logical node and less for the specific semantic based on the logical node type. Next, we introduce the data object and the data attributes. We use the example of the data object POS, which represents the position of the switch from the previous logical node XSWI. This data object is of the common data class double point control. A data object has multiple data attributes. The structure of the data object or with other words, what data attributes are available is determined by the common data class. We have a first group of data attributes representing the status information. Among them, we have STVAL, where we find the value of the position of the switch, which typically will be either open or closed, but can as well be in an intermediate or bad state. Then we have Q for the quality, indicating among other if the information is valid, and finally, T for the timestamp of the last change of the position value. These three attributes are the typical operational information of the switch position. But with the IC61850 data model, we attach as well non-operational information, for example, configuration information, to the same data object. Here we have a few examples, like the possibility to describe the control behavior of the switch or the operate timeout. Further, we may have information related to substitution. Substitution will be described later. 
Also later we will discuss controls in IC61815 in general and how the control parameter like the command to open or close the switch are modeled. Functional constraints are used to classify the data attributes based on their purpose. In the example shown, the function constraint ST identifies the status attributes, CF the configuration attributes, or SV the attributes related to substitution. What we see as well in the example is that the data attributes may be of a basic type, like the upper timeout, which is a 32-bit unsigned integer, or they may be further structures like the timestamp. This is shown in the next slide. A data attribute may have in principle an unlimited number of hierarchical structure levels. We have here an example where we have a constructed attribute class of a type vector, which can be a type from a data attribute, in that case CVAL. This is a composite component where we will find two elements beyond, like magnitude and angle, which is again of a type analog value, which is again a constructed attribute class. And beyond that, we may find the primitive components like i or f for an integer or floating point representation of the analog value. So in principle, we may have multiple hierarchical level beyond a data attribute until we get to the basic type like integer 32 or floating point 32 shown in this slide. At the top level of our data model, we find the logical device. This is the top of the hierarchical structure of the model. A logical device is basically a collection of logical nodes. The standard does not define logical devices. They are typically defined by the ID manufacturer when he creates the model for his device. A typical usage of logical devices is to group logical nodes for protection functions, for control functions, and for measurements. Logical devices are relevant for the naming hierarchy or for the management of the device, device behavior like putting the whole device in a test mode or deactivation of a function. So far we have now seen the elements of the data model. Now let's have a look where they are defined in the various parts of the 61850 standard. What we see here is an overview on where we find what about the data model in 61850. At the top level we have the definition of logical node classes, which with for each of them a class name, the semantic description of the logical node, and the detailed definition of the structure in terms of data objects with the names. We also have a detailed semantic descriptions and type indication of the data objects. This is defined in the part 7.4 for everything what is the basic substation automation logical nodes and in parts 7410 or 7420 for logical nodes that have been defined for, few, for new domains. The part 61850-73 defines all the common data classes with the structure in terms of data attributes with names, the semantic and the type of data attributes. We also define in part 73 constructed attribute classes with the structures in terms of subdata attribute with names, as well as the semantic and type of subdata attributes. And finally, in the part 61850-72, we will find the specification of the basic types and of common ACSI types. Let's start now to have a closer look how these definitions and specifications are presented in the various standards documents. We start again at the top level with the logical nodes that are defined in part 7.4. For an easier handling, logical nodes are grouped based on their functionality. A logical node class name is always standardized and has four characters. The first character is reserved for the group indication. In this slide, 
we see the logical node groups that have been introduced by edition 1 of IC6185074. The number indicates the number of logical node classes defined for that group. I will also provide a few examples here. Uh, we have the logical node PDIF, differential protection, which belongs to the group of protection logical nodes. We have the logical node RBRF, that represents a breaker failure functionality, which belongs to the group of protection related logical nodes. The XCBR circuit breaker belongs to the group switch gear. The CSWI switch controller belongs to the group control. MMXU, a measurement unit that represents basically calculated values, RMS values for voltage and currents, belongs to the group M, metering and measurement or YPTR, power transformer, which belongs to the group of power transformers. With addition 2 of IC6285074 and with the part 7410 for hydro and 7420 for distributed energy resources, we have today more than 200 logical nodes standardized. In the standard, the specification of a logical node consists of two parts. A textual description of the semantic that may as well include some modeling hints and a table that defines the structure of the logical node. This slide here shows an example for the textual description of the logical node XCBR from edition 2 of IC61850-74. And the next slide shows the table that specifies the structure of that same logical node. So what we find here is the name of the data object, the reference to the common data class, a short explanation and the indication if the data object is mandatory or optional. Finally, for each of the data objects specified, the standard provides, in addition to the short explanation that we already have seen in the table of the logical node definition, a detailed semantic description with all the information needed to understand the data object. As shown here, if the value of the data object is of a type enumeration, that description includes as well an explanation of the various values. So basically, if the value of the data object circuit breaker operating capability has the value 2, that means we can still do one open. If it has the value 3, that means we can do a close and an open again. As already mentioned, the structure of a data object is defined through the common data class. A common data class can be considered as a structured type definition. Common data classes are defined in part 7.3 of the standard. In the specification, common data classes are grouped according to their main characteristics. The groups are shown here with a few examples. Again, the number shows the number of common data classes that belong to that group that exists today in the standard. SPS single point status or ACT protection activation information are status information. MV is measured values, the same for Y, the three-phase measured values belongs to the group measured information. DPC belongs to controls, SPG to status settings and DPL to description information. This is just a few examples. A common data class is defined by a list of data attributes and the reference to either a basic type or to a constructed attribute type. This is provided in part 7.3 as a table for each common data class. In addition to the attribute name and the attribute type, the table includes as well the information about the function constraint and the presence condition of each data attribute which can be mandatory, optional or based on a particular condition. In addition, value ranges may be indicated and trigger options. Trigger options are relevant for the reporting model and are not further discussed here. The next slide shows how the semantic definition of a data attribute is provided with an example of the explanation of a data attribute T, which is a timestamp. Here it also shows for each of the common data classes to which 
data attribute, the timestamp applies. In most cases, a common data class is defined as a list of data attributes where the data attributes refer to a type. There are, however, a few examples where the elements listed as part of the common data class are again data objects referring to another common data class. A common example for this is the common data class Y that groups the relevant measurements of a three-phase power system. As you may see, we ha now have an additional section for subdata objects where we have a reference to another common data class which is, in this case, CMV for complex measured values. So a data object of a common data class Y has not only a couple of data attributes, like shown at the bottom here, angle reference or a description attribute, D. Such a data object has, again, subdata objects like phase A, phase B, phase C for the three phase values. Finally, the standard part 7.3 defines as well the constructed attribute class. This slide shows an example of the definition of a constructed attribute class. In this case, the attribute class vector, which is basically two components, magnitude and angle, each of them of the attribute type analog value, which is again another constructed attribute class. Finally, we will as well find in part 7.3 an overview of the various functional constraints used in the context of the common data class specifications in part 7.3. Just as a remark, there are additional functional constraints used for the control blocks models of the abstract communication service interface definition, but this is out of the scope of this presentation. And last but not least, the part 7.2 defines our basic data types listed here and the common ACS types listed in this next slide. So to summarize this part of the tutorial, the information available within an IED is exposed as an IC61850 data model. This data model is hierarchical and consists of logical devices, logical nodes, data objects, and data attributes. Logical nodes with their data objects are defined in part 7.4. The data objects refer to common data classes as a structured type. The common data classes are defined in part 7.3. A common data class is a collection of data attributes Data attributes are either of a basic type, defined in part 7.2, or of a constructed attribute class. In the next part, we will now step by step explain how you can create a data model of a device.